Okay, thank you, Amina. <laughs> um, first of all, let me ask you a question. How many of you have ever invented your own recipe at home? Please raise your hand. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, let me share, you, um, share with you my stories. When I was 16, I invented a happy surprise for my family on the Chinese New Year's Eve. That was a weird flavored chicken. I used all the spices and dressings I could find at home, soaked the boiled chicken meat in them for three hours. It turned out to be delicious, and my family loved it. For that specific invention, family was my motivation. Fifteen years later, when I become an entrepreneur doing innovation in the business area, people is my motivation. In 2009, I left McKinsey, the consulting firm, and started a bakery called Pantry's Best with my boyfriend, Mark, who is an engineer from Stanford, passionate in baking. <laughs> In four years, we expanded from a two-people team only in Beijing until now an 80-people team with presence in both Beijing and Shanghai. Our vision was to deliver really inspirational, high-quality desserts with five-star service. 80% of our employees are from rural China and 90% of them only had a high school degree. None of them had much idea about what Western baked goods is before they came to our company. Every individual in my organization is just like raw ingredient you use to bake a cupcake. Every ingredient could be simple and seemingly unimpressive, but together, they made the most delicious treat in the world. In four years, we have created many interesting products, such as a bacon-flavored cupcake, <laughs> or a pumpkin mousse cake with pumpkin caviar buried in, and a red velvet cake with a Christmas tree hidden inside. <laughs> All these creative products are not only done by Mark or by me, by the management team. It's a collective effort by our team. When people are criticizing that traditional Chinese education kills people's creativity or lowest level working labor do not need any creativity, I disagree. I believe that every individual has some creativity inside them, be it an Ivy League graduate or an illiterate woman from rural China. The question is, how can you develop the creativity out of them? You cannot just tell them to be creative or force them to. My experience in the past four years taught me you need to inspire them to be creative. To inspire them, first I tried to teach them the corporate five-star dessert vision, like one world, one dream, but it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> to inspire them, you need to respect their individual dream. You need to help them fulfill their own dreams and then bring them onto the journey to a bigger dream of their life. So I decided to get to know my staff by knowing them, not as my employee, but as an individual. So once I asked them, what do you want to achieve? Someone said, 
I want to build a nicer home for my parents. Someone said, I want to marry my teenage lover. And someone said, I want to work hard to give my kids in my hometown a better life. These dreams seem irrelevant with our five-star deserved version, vision, but they are big dreams for these people. And it is those dreams that inspire them to innovate in their daily life. Here, let me share with you a real story of one of my core team members. Let's call her Miss Velvet. I met Miss Velvet in 2007. She had blood cancer when she was a kid. She got cured, luckily, but her hip got permanently damaged by the treatment, so she couldn't walk properly. She's from rural Xinjiang, about the same age as I am. In 2010, I met her again, and I realized her health condition has got so bad that she couldn't find any job. No company wanted her. Knowing her, I can see how badly she wants a job to support herself. So I asked her, are you interested in becoming a customer service staff in my company? We are looking for customer service staff. She was like, yeah, of course, but I can't walk to your workplace. At the place she lived, there was no landline. So we tried really hard to set up cell phone, network, Wi-Fi, and we upgraded our customer service system to enable it that people can answer phone calls from a remote places. In that way, she started to work in our company. By talking to her on the phone, People always mistaken her as a co-founder because she always went out of her way to help our customers. This new job really motivated her. After seven months working with, her, with, working with us, she came to me one day saying, I'm sorry, I need to leave. I need to quit the company. I was so disappointed and unpleasantly surprised. I asked her why. And she said, I'm pregnant. I want to keep the baby. I want to get rid of all the cell phone radiation. Her hemogram was still lower than average people. And having this baby could be life-threatening to her. But I know she always wanted to have a baby. So I supported her and I let her go. 11 months later, she came back with her baby's photo on her cell phone desktop. And this time, she got quickly promoted to her operational manager. It was her daughter motivated her to work harder and also inspired her to come up with more interesting solutions to her daily work. Last Halloween, we had a pumpkin macaron on top of different flavors of chocolate cupcakes. It is a quite complicated product set because different flavors of chocolate cupcake needs to match with different faces on the pumpkin. So instead of writing up a really traditional product guideline and hanging on the wall, she made up some funny points, such as, I'm Mr. Pepper, I have a fiery eyes on my head. In that way, people can remember the products much faster than following traditional product guides. Last month, she bought flight tickets for her family, including her daughter, flying from Xinjiang. She proudly sh showed them 
the bakery, and her workplace. When I saw that, I realized it was the fulfillment of my people's dream motivated me to work harder, to do better, to make the organization better. Innovation is contagious. You can't rely on some really smart talent thinking in a silo and coming out with great ideas at hand. That wouldn't work. What you want to happen is that people coming up with one solution, bouncing the idea off of his or her peers, and then make the solution better and more innovative. I live with cupcakes every day. So I found this communication process very much like making an icing, a cream cheese icing on the red velvet cake. You need to mix it with great care to avoid unpleasant sugar crumbs or unnecessary air bubbles. I have one employee who is the best in making that cream cheese icing. Let's name her Miss Lemon. Miss Lemon joined us in 2010 when she was only 18 years old. She was so talented that she quickly got promoted to a team leader. But recently, she said she wanted to quit because she thought people hated her. And I encouraged her to talk more about it. And I realized it's her way of communication that discouraged her and made people no longer like her that much. So I was motivated by her to invent a communication course in the company. I was not trained as a communication specialist, nor had I participated any communication training. So I just invented everything from scratch, building Pantry's best case studies. So I taught them how to give feedbacks, how to talk to people, and I built sporty games to break the ice among them because these people have no idea how to talk to each other, like acquaintance, but not like colleagues. I gave them homeworks. In one of the homeworks, I asked them, what was the happiest thing for you in the last month? And Ms. Lemon wrote, I found I could shape the atmosphere of my team now. She said one day, she walked into the kitchen realizing nobody was talking. The, the team atmosphere was really gloomy, like the air outside today. And she observed this one team member that was extremely unhappy. Before, she would guess, maybe that person was upset by me, or maybe that person was upset by the workload. This time, she just walked straight to that person and asked, why are you unhappy? It's that amazingly simple question, why are you unhappy, changed the atmosphere. That person explained to her it was because family matter. And, and that unhappy person resumed talking to each other. And the team atmosphere in the kitchen changed, improved. So I was inspired by that and inspired by many changes in the organization, like what Ms. Lemon had. And I developed more courses, like time management, giving feedbacks, emotional control, etc. Innovation is neither a lonely process, nor something only extraordinary people can accomplish. You need to pour your heart into your people, respect their individual dreams, uncover their hidden talents, inspire them not to be afraid of making mistakes, but to learn from their mistakes. There, you will find innovation as a positive feedback loop. And in the end, you yourself get inspired and you will find happy surprises in your world every day.
Thank you.